I'm a special one. I decided I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to OmniFit TV, this is Jerome Stormer speaking and today's video is about finances in football. Not necessarily finances, more so practicality. Now, Chelsea have recently tripled their season ticket holders amount. That's a lot of money. Whereas Borussia Dortmund came out and announced that their tickets will remain affordable, the 50 plus 1 rule will continue to uh, play a huge role in the club. They will never change their kit colors or their, you know, the club's badge or kit colors, which is important because as soon as I read that, I remembered what happened to Cardiff a couple years ago with their rebranding, and that was horrible. And that they will uh, prioritize their national competitions first, which is expected. Now, considering the fact that we are coming out of a pandemic, and we're not really coming out of it all, all that fair yet, but at least fans are back in the stadiums, right? The sport is moving forward again, and it's hard to uh, take this kind of thing out of context, but you have to pay attention to the fact that there were a lot of clubs in debt. And as far as I had read, Chelsea were not one of them, which makes the tripling of the season tickets even weirder. It just seems like Monumental greed. Given the fact that the Premier League is already one of, if not the richest league in the world because it brings in a lot of money, this baffles me even more so. And you look at the Bundesliga, whose clubs implement the 50 plus 1 rule, whose clubs should be in much more debt because they make a lot less money. Implementing, they should actually be doing what clubs in the Premier League are doing with their season tickets. You know, you would assume that a club like Dortmund, who are like, okay, we don't compete in major European competitions that often, we don't go on to win them, so we don't get the bonuses the Premier League clubs make, and we don't get the bonuses that they get in their leagues in ours. Because, let's face it, the bonuses that Premier League clubs get in comparison to that, or those from Europe's other top five leagues is a lot less. Like, oh, sorry, a lot more. Like clubs in the Premier League actually make a lot more money out of the positions that they finish on the table in comparison to their European counterparts in their leagues. And then you think to yourself, what the point of this is? You make a lot of broadcasting money. Now you're making money again from the fans attending the stadium, attending the games. Why would you triple your season tickets? It makes no sense. You have calf, you have you have cash flow back into the club. You're making much more revenue again. You are not in debt. Why are you doing this? And then you have Dortmund, who should be in debt if they aren't, still sticking to this. Still sticking to the practical way to run a club. I have a lot of respect for that. I admire them for that. And I think this is how any club should be run. And it's kind of funny that I read the 50 plus 1 rule was still being implemented because English pundits were actually talking about having that work in England, which is a near impossibility, if you ask me. I mean, it would be the ideal solution to most of the Premier League's problems to have fans actually play a huge role in the making of decisions. And that's how it should be in any club. That's how it should be around the world. But then again, it's England. You get privately owned clubs and... You get this huge amount of cash flow coming in just thanks to the marketing of the league. And you'd think they'd kind of just pull back a little, but they don't. They really don't. And you have two sides of the same spectrum here with Dortmund and Chelsea. And you just wonder, how much more are they going to stretch that? What more are we going to see? How much more are tickets going to cost? How much how much of a luxury is it for a fan to go to the stadium and watch a game? Will that always be viewed as a luxury? Is it not supposed to be available to the common folk? Look at where football was 20 to 30 or 40 odd years ago. Where are we? When people wanted to actually go to games, it was different back then. I wasn't alive back then, granted. But just, players made a lot less. They were much more grounded. Tickets cost a lot less. People actually had access to games. I mean, obviously not in the way we do now with our cell phones and TVs and all that. 
But going to the stadium was a completely different experience that almost anyone could afford. Why are we taking that away from fans? Seriously. And I am a Chelsea fan, and I say that as one. I wonder if, if, not if, when, because one day I'll be able to go to a game. And I know that for a fact. And it's just, I really think to myself, how much am I going to pay for a ticket? If this is how much it costs now, and if I plan on ever being a season ticket holder, which I do, by the way, how much is it going to cost me? And is it worth it at the end of the day? You have to think about these things. You have to think about your fans. You have to think about how much they can afford. You're supposed to be catering to them. I'm not trying to take from them. They're the life's blood of this game. They're the life's blood of this sport. There has to be a limit here. Seriously. And that's all I'm going to... I'm just going to stop this here because it's kind of annoying and I don't want to rant. Uh, if you like this video, just, you know, please leave a like, uh, comment if you have anything to say about what I've said. If you agree or disagree with anything, please let there be social discourse below. The links to our social media accounts are in my description below. Um, our, Eng our English content is on Instagram and Twitter, and our Arabic content is on Facebook, and we have an Arabic YouTube channel as well, the link to which is also below. And I will see you next time in Whistleblowers. Excuse the, excuse the exhaustion. Have a good night, everyone. Cheers, and thanks for watching.